Good evening, everyone. Hugh Davies here in portal number two in the Shramsburg Cave System. It's exciting to be back down in the, in the caves. Um, today, I'm joined by two of, of our uh, really greatest winemakers. We're, we're playing the, the Shramsburg winemaker hits here. Mike Reynolds and Craig Romer, who were the, the head winemaker, assistant winemaker back in 1996 when I formally joined the, the team uh, following the little education at UC Davis and then uh, time working abroad in, in a couple of other wineries. But it's been fun to, to think about this concept, getting the band back together. Uh, so Craig and Mike are both joining us today for what I think is probably the coolest tasting we've done this whole year. A vertical tasting of Jay Shram, right? We've got the 2011, our current vintage. We'll also look at the 2006, uh, which is currently going out in our uh, December club shipment. So a library J Shram in our December uh, club shipment. So that's exciting. We have the 2001 and then the 96. And so the 96 was actually the, the, that vintage. So that first vintage that I uh, uh, worked with these two guys uh, back uh, at this stage, what, 24 years ago, right? So this will be a fun tasting. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed their Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, I had a chance to uh, get, get out of town with the family, go to a very remote part of, of Northern California, hang out by a lake. We didn't see anybody, so we were, were good. I hope everyone is dealing well with the current uh, COVID challenge. Uh, fingers crossed that, uh, that the next few months will, will, will help, help us uh, get through this, this difficult uh, time period that we've all been in. Uh, but uh, one, I guess, uh, interesting positive that has come out of it is that we've been able to do uh, well with our virtual tastings. And so today I think will be one of the best that we've done. I wanted to thank, before I forget, uh, Matt and Megan and Emma behind the scenes on our team who orchestrate these activities for us. And I believe we're up to about 20 of the virtual tastings. So thank you to, the, the, to those three folks for all the good work that they've done. Now, one other point, if you have any questions, uh, by all means, uh, reach out to us. I know some of you have these very vintages uh, that you're uh, tasting alongside with us. Uh, others may have other bottles of Shramsburg, but uh, uh, we'd love to field the questions and thank you all for participating today. Wish you the very best for the holidays uh, to come. All right, um, here at the winery, we are uh, starting to get a really good look at the 2020 vintage as well. We have uh, been tasting through base wine, something that I did with, with Mike and Craig uh, 24 years ago, 23 years ago, 22 years ago, uh, something that we do every year, but pretty excited to report on the 2020 vintage. A few new vineyards in, in the program, uh, but as we've tasted through things, we're really actually very excited about what we have produced and looking forward to blending and bottling the 2020 vintage in the uh, year to come. Uh, we are still open for tastings at Shramsburg and at Davies. Uh, knock on wood, we'll see what happens. But uh, if, if we do shut down for a period of time, we can do virtual tastings like this and we can personalize them uh, with you as well. So thank you to those of you who have participated in those events with us over the course of the year. J. Shram, right? Here it is. This is the 2011. This is a wine that we started making in 1987. Our first vintage of Shramsburg Blanc de Blanc was 65. Our first vintage of the Jayshram was 87. And my parents had this idea at that time to, to take their winemaking activity to another level. Uh, they wanted to make uh, something that uh, was singular, that was outstanding, that was signature, if you will. Uh, they wanted to focus on, on Chardonnay, like they did at the outset with Blanc de Blanc. But here we're going to uh, call out from the range of lots that we make the very best of our, our Chardonnay lots to craft a, a, a blend of an exquisite depth that we would age for a bit longer in, the, in that kind of French tete de tr tradition. Um, the first vintage was 87. I apologize, we're not going to go all the way back and taste the 87. We'll go to, to 96, so, so that would have been the 10th version. Um, but uh, uh, these two guys, Craig and Mike, really helped us uh, establish this style, something really singular, uh, at, 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 especially at the outset for the United States winemaking scene. Uh, that notion of making bottle fermented sparkling wine in the French Champagne tradition with Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, traditional method. But with this, how do we make it taste as fine as the finest from Champagne or anywhere else in the world? And uh, I really wanted to thank both Craig and Mike 
for working so hard with us for, in each case, more than 10 years uh, to, to determine this style, uh, to craft this style. And so I'm going to open the 11. Uh, we'll we'll uh, give them each a, a taste, but maybe we'll check in. We'll start with Mike. Mike started with us in, in 1990, worked until 2001. He's went, gone on to do some great things independent of Schramsberg. It's hard to believe that that would be possible. Uh, but uh, Mike, great to have you back. Thank you for being a mentor to me all those years ago and for joining us for this tasting. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, what you're up to these days? So, um, so I left Schramsberg in 2001. And uh, not too long afterwards, I met uh, Craig and Catherine Hall. And we had a shared vision of making great Cabernet in the Napa Valley. And we started the Hall Winery uh, from uh, what was basically scratch at that time. And so that's what I've been up to for the last 18 years. And then we've expanded our portfolio to include the Walt brand, which focuses on Pinot Noir and Chardonnay from cool climates in the Pacific Coast, as well as the Baca brand, which focuses on Zinfandels from some of the most interesting vineyards around the state. So that's what I've been up to. There's a little pop for you, the 2011 is coming, coming around. Um, and Craig, why don't we check in with you? Uh, Craig started with us back in uh, 94 and then worked with us until 2008, uh, helped uh, bridge the gap uh, as Mike had left. Uh, and then we brought on other members of the team. Today, Sean Thompson, our head winemaker, who's joined us with a number of these virtual tastings, uh, was hired uh, when Craig was here, and, and we continue on. But Craig, great to have you back in the cave. Huh? Portal 2, how's it going for you these days? Pretty good. I know all the light switches on, so are, so I can uh, flip the lights off here pretty quickly. But no, I'm doing well. Um, I was kind of an interesting story, and maybe it aside to me, but digging through some files this weekend, and I found my hiring paper or the, 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 the letter that Mike Reynolds sent me in 1994 uh, offering me the job here. And wow, a lot of time has, has transpired since. But uh, what I'm doing now uh, is pretty vast and varied. If it has bubbles in it, uh, if, if it's wine and it needs bubbles, I can do it. I'm solving problems, uh, I'm making still wine, I'm dealing and managing in vineyard issues. Uh, if it's wine, I've got my hands on it. Well, it's it's fun to uh, to start this tasting with the 2011, and this is a wine that I know we've done in at least one of the other virtual tastings we've done this year. The 11 was, um, in many ways, a, uh, uh, a, a an extreme vintage, right? It was it was probably the latest, coolest vintage that we've had, maybe since '98. Uh, Actually, all three of us were, were here at Transfer back in 98. 98 was something like this. So a year where you get a little extra uh, cool temperature, you get more rain perhaps than you'd really like to have, and it necessitates waiting a really long time for the harvest to eventually happen. But very vibrant, uh, uh, this style is. I think it worked, th this cold year worked quite well for, for this style of sparkling wine, where we're looking to have a, a, a sparkling wine that could really age for a good long time. And so there's a very brisk acidity here, a little more elevated than we, we generally see, and frankly more elevated than you see typically in French Champagne, even though people think of, ah, is Champagne has got to be uh, you know, more tart. It's, it's a, 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 a region that's further to the north. Our proximity to the, to the ocean here with our coastal vineyards has really allowed us to, to, to find uh, great depth of acidity because of those, those cool maritime uh, temperatures. The, the, while it might warm up a little bit in the day, it cools right back down every night. In an extreme year like this, it's amazing. We can, we can pick it fairly ripe, but we can also capture this, this elevated acidity. I'd be curious to see, uh, maybe we'll start with Mike, what what you see in in this this wine? You weren't here in two thousand eleven. Very familiar with our our techniques, right? How we make these wines. Um, what do you what do you see in this wine? Does it remind you of say the eighty seven J Shram that you helped us disgorge all those years ago? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, I think one of the things that happened in the nineties is we transferred the winery to really cool climate vineyards. And, um, and in 87, we certainly didn't have the portfolio of uh, coastal vineyards that you had in, in 2011, plus the cooler vintage. But I, you know, for me, this wine is incredibly fresh and bright and fruitful and vibrant right now. 
Um, you know, that's why we selected Chardonnay as the base of J. Schramm way back when, because it retains its freshness and its purity over really long periods of time. Maybe, maybe Craig has something to say about it. Well, plenty to say about this very nice wine. Uh, that Chardonnay definitely shines through. There's a uh, nice freshness, but the, the barrel characteristic shows up nicely on the palate. It integrates quite well into the palate uh, flavors and or taste and the aromas. Uh, nice mingling of Pinot Noir in there. So this particular vintage, 90% Chardonnay, 10% Pinot. There have been vintages where we've added a little more Pinot. I don't think there's ever been a vintage where we've added less. You know, about, it's typically 10 to 20%. I think there has been one where we were as high as 30. Um, but uh, I really like the, the, the strident, bright nature of this wine. Relative to uh, the, the, the style that we were doing, certainly with the, the 87, the 88, 89, those, those first vintages where we might have had you know, four years of tirage age. Here we're getting, we're up to about eight years of tirage age. So there's a little bit more depth that, that comes from uh, that extended time in contact with the yeast. Interesting uh, to consider uh, Shores as a vineyard. Uh, at one point, we just called it the layered vineyard, you know, kind of on, on Bayview or, or on, on Las Amigas there. Uh, a Chardonnay vineyard that we still work with today and uh, played a key role actually in this 11. Amazing. And when we go back and taste the 96, uh, there's yeah, that, that there. same exact vineyard. Granted, replanted, mm -hmm. re replanted, or in, in 96, maybe if, uh, in the process of being replanted, but uh, uh, played a role. Uh, also, Keeper, which was a vineyard that we, we've now worked with already for like 20 years. So you, both of you may both be familiar it. with that vineyard uh, as it was in our portfolio. Stevens uh, plays a role that, that we started with, I believe, 98 or somewhere thereabouts, 99. Uh, so both of you were here when we started working with that vineyard out uh, next to Tamales Bay, yep. uh, still the, the last of the, uh, the vineyards that we harvest. And in this year, 2011, it was November 5th when we finished, <laughs> when we finished picking because, uh, well, at that point, actually it was only 16 bricks and the leaves were falling off the vine. So we, we, were, we were done, the season was over. Hey, these are little, little clusters, little berries. The yields are always pretty low. But uh, Barbara, here's a shout out to you. Thank you for working with us on that one. Um, I love this wine. All right. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and jump to the, uh, the, the 2006, the next vintage. And Mike, as I'm pouring this wine, give us a little sense for your recall back in uh, 1990. We would have been... We hadn't, it was called Kuba X at the time. What, 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 what was this Kuba X and how did we come up with this J. Schramm name? Yeah, well, Kuba X was, uh, I think, uh, at least in the initial stages, a, uh, the opportunity for your parents just to kick the can down the road because they didn't want to think about the marketing <laughs> of the wine just yet. That's always coming up with a brand name is, is really challenging and really difficult. And actually the first vintage lived right behind where he was standing to my left uh, as it aged. But um, in, in the late 1990 and early 1991, we really <clears throat> wanted to um, make a wine that had similar flavor characteristics to French Champagne. And we went through extensive trials and comparisons. I mean, it was rough duty tasting uh, flight after flight of French Tetris cuvées with the J. Schramm of that vintage to make sure we were in the, in the same vein of flavor profiles. And I was fortunate enough to, to sit through all those tastings. But the idea was to, to get this extra aromatic power. I think that's what we were really searching for. Um, you know, not only in the wine and the base wines we were creating, but also what could we do with dosage to help bring that out. And it was a really fun effort. The wine initially was released in 1992 mm. and uh, was very well received out of the gate. But as Hugh said earlier, it was um, a new thing for California sparkling wine. I think the most expensive other California wine at the time was $25 and we came out at 50, which was, you know, unheard of and, and heresy in the California wine industry. Well, it's interesting. I've just been handed a, a note um, 
We've been joined by David and Judy Breitstein, who oh, probably wow. were involved in selling that uh, very first uh, vintage of JSRAM, the, the 87 back in 92. In fact, if I remember correctly, I think we did a special event down at down in Hollywood with with, uh, with the Duke of Bourbon all they, those, yeah, they those years ago. So thank you. Also, thank you to Natalie Bell, uh, Allison Tedrick, Jeannie Cox, Wendy Malinowski, my cousin in Chicago, and Lisa Lane for joining us. There are a few shouts out, actually, for Mike and for Craig, by the way. Um, you've got fans that are out there uh, tuning in with us. So we're on to the 2006 uh, J Shram. Jump back five years, and this was uh, something that we had envisioned doing uh, all along. It, to have, I shouldn't say all along, but for some years now, we've we've been saving this 2006 to be able to do it in our uh, Shramsburg Seller Club uh, shipment in a Shramsburg Seller Club shipment. So here, five years after the the 11, we're giving our our club members uh, a 2006, which is pretty cool. So we're going to taste it for you, uh, taste it with you right now and give you a sense. This one would have been disgorged uh, at this stage probably about six years ago, uh, right? So the, the, where the, the 2011 is uh, disgorged a year ago. Here maybe six, seven years ago, uh, disgorged of the, uh, the 2006. This vintage, um, Mike will tell us your perspective on 2006. You were, uh, you were at, uh, at Hall in 2006, if I remember, a few years ago, one of your first vintages down there. Yeah, so um, I, I'll have to admit that um, the, the sparkling wine harvest profile and the table wine har harvest profile are always different. You know, you cannot compare them. Uh, and I actually don't remember what the sparkling wine profile was in, <laughs> in 2006. I definitely remember the Cabernet profile. But in general, um, 2006 was not a, an overripe year. It was a little bit cooler um, for Cabernet. And... Um, you know, I, I think it's not thought of as a great Cabernet vintage, although I will say at Hall we made some of our best wines ever in that vintage. And um, so I, I, I can say that it's a vintage I'm particularly fond of for all sorts of reasons. So. Well, six was a uh, shout out to my son, Nelson. It was his birthday year. So uh, Nelson, happy uh, uh, 14 now, right? Uh, but six was a year, five, which preceded it. Big crop, late season, uh, more moisture definitely that year. Seven that followed six, I think really got more critical acclaim because it was a, it was a drier year with not much of a, of, a, of a wet winter to precede it. And Cabernet got to ripen really easily, right? Uh, but six fits in there, I think, nicely in between. It, w it, was, a, it was a tweener year, I, not, not, too, not too late, not, not too early. Uh, as I look at this glass, I'm finding some really nice uh, uh, caramelized character, uh, uh, almost hints of, of uh, creme caramel, uh, beautiful custard element. And, and some of these tones are tones that you don't find in the current vintage, right? You can't. Craig, tell us a little bit about your experience with that. With two, Again, Craig's done this for, he was with us for 14, 14 years. 14 years, yeah. No, 2006 was, uh, in my memory, we, we, were, we were pushing a lot more into the Sonoma Coast region, uh, heading over towards Sebastopol and Hawk Hill Vineyard started to jump into the game. Uh, we started to get uh, some very unique, cool climate pieces from that, that region. Um, so this was sort of breaking the mold. Uh, Salt and Stall Vineyard was very much into this one as well. So this was really pushing the cool climate fruit. And I love the way that this wine has developed. It, it's like Hugh had mentioned, it's creamy and it's rich, Acid is integrated so nicely. This is a, a great food wine. It's interesting as we look at the key vineyards that played a role in this 2006 J. Shram. We've talked a little about Hawk Hill, uh, so that came into the program about then. Still a really important vineyard. In fact, we get um, we get to do a little a little bit more of the Hawk Hill now than we once did. Thank you, the, the Mike the checks um, the. Uh, uh, also, we had a little bit of Shores again here, right? Uh, a little bit of the Tognetti, another vineyard that we, we started working with uh, back in, uh, in the late 90s. To me, those late 90s years were formative. And so for me, it's, 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 it's really uh, uh, exciting to have both Craig and Mike here to be able to acknowledge the, the, the effort, the commitment that they gave us uh, for so many vintages to kind of set this, this program on track. It is... Uh, uh, I think a unique occupation that we have 
to, to, to make wine, right? To, to do this every single year. And here with this JSRAM program, we are 33 years into it, right? Uh, but then thinking about making Shrams Rouge Blanc de Blanc, we've been doing that one for 55 years, which is, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a few years. Uh, some of us are actually that old now. Uh, Craig, what can you tell us about that? You know, 55, how's it feel? Just a little younger than you. Just, <laughs> just a little bit. Just a few days. Three days. But you hit 55. I you did too. I, 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 <laughs> Mike likes the young guy in the group. You know, he's, uh, what, 53 or 4 or something like that. Who's um, talking? Anyhow, other thoughts on the, the, uh, the, the 2006 as we look at that. Do you like the, Craig, maybe I'll go back to you. Do you like the, the development, that, that five-year uh, increment? Yeah, the development in, in, in this one too, the, the, the oxidation is, is, is pleasant. It's not overwhelming or overbearing. And that's really balanced out by still, there's a fresh fruit backing to this wine as well. There is, there's the, uh, the, the citrus and the apple uh, now just gently baked, you know, a little bit glazed. Uh, I think the, the, the age is just adding richness, but it's still quite vibrant, fresh. What do you think, Mike? Uh, I love the, the richness and the, um, the volume that's coming from the aging. Um, Craig talked about the caramelization, I believe, and, and there's a thickness to this wine. You don't talk about sparkling wine having a thickness and a viscosity to it, but you can feel it in the, in the flavor profile of this wine. That used to be one of the descriptors that we talked about too, a viscous nature to the acidity or a coating acid, and that was always the blend premise to a lot of these wines is how coating and or how effective the acid was in, in the base wine blend um, before you added the bubbles to it. I always remember Jack Davies coming up and like, you have to think a long way into the future when you're putting these blends together. And every time I sit down with a base wine and bubble it up, I think of Jack Davies saying, think, look into that crystal ball, imagine what bubbles are unlike this one. And this, this definitely resembled what I remember blending. Yeah, Jack used to use the analogy that, um, that making sparkling wine was like skeet shooting. And if you wanted to hit the, hit the duck, you had yeah, to shoot, absolutely. shoot in front of it. So, so here we're oh. shooting pretty far in, 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 in front of it, right? We're, we, we're envisioning uh, in 2001, I don't know if we were envisioning uh, what it might taste like exactly. In 19 years, we were probably thinking a little bit more like, what's it going to taste like at six or seven when we... We we uh, disgorge and and release, but uh, this this is fun, right? Here here we're 19 years down the track. Um, I think a little bit more of some of the savory tones are coming into play here. There is that interesting uh, caramelized note that was, was strong in the uh, uh, the six here that the, the, that's present, but there's this interesting savory tone that that's that's uh, joining in with that. Uh, Craig, I'll, I'll put you to the test. You were here in 2001. Uh, I mean, What's a, the recall of the 2001 It was a vintage? tall order to fill. Mike was gone, and, and uh, it was time to, you know, put together some decent wines and follow his order. And, um, I, the, the one thing I remember, uh, 2001, is we had a little bit of a spring frost issue and going out with some of the growers and walking in the vineyards and them talking about, oh, we're going to get 30 tons out of this block this year. And I picked up the canopy and looked under and said, maybe you'll get 10 tons. And it was a light crop year, but it was a, it was a lot of fun. It produced a high acidity wine, which is still showing here in the 2001. Uh, this is remarkable. Uh, it has that umami characteristic, not only on the palate, but there's that what do we used to sit? Uh, the, the chicken salt, the bouillon. Yeah, the chicken bouillon. The, the greasy the turkey from the oven. <laughs> well, Thanksgiving is just coming fast, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's an element of that savory. Um, for me, a little more the chicken bouillon than I think the, the turkey grease on this one. The, the, the chicken bouillon, for those uh, listening, uh, is maybe a little more delicate, right? The, the turkey grease, eh, just a little richer, maybe the, that old Pinot uh, essence. Um, but yeah, how cool is this? This was uh, this was a. I, I'm with Craig. Mike was gone, and he had been the the, the head head guy. Um, but uh, as as he left, I mean, honestly, in in '98, we lost my 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 dad, who had helped run this thing, had run it for 33 years. Uh, so that was also a transitional year. We don't get to taste the the '98 uh, tonight. But uh, with each step, uh, there, there's there's been uh, uh, a um, 
you know, an ethos and, and, and with that, not a recipe, but, but, a, but a notion for, for what it is that, that we're, we're trying to do, that target, you know, I think of uh, the, 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 the quote uh, uh, where, there, where there is no, no care omitted uh, in the process of, of, of making uh, these wines. So 2001, uh, also a little, no Schwarz, it looks like, or, or what we used to call the layered in, in this blend, but a little Tognadian Schwarz, also from that Bayview Avenue pocket. Uh, the Stevens playing a role again. A different San Giacomo vineyard uh, where we talked about the Bates. Bates. In this case, it was a Vela uh, that uh, played a, a nice uh, key role in, in, our, in our program uh, back at that time. Uh, Mike, what are you seeing here in the, the one and how do you feel uh, we've, we've evolved going from uh, 11 to six and now, now back to one? Yeah, I actually have been jumping back and forth while you and Craig were talking. Um, for me, it's really interesting. This wine seems more opulent. It actually feels lower in acidity to me, even though if I look at the, the data, it suggests mm -hmm. that it's not. Um, I remember absolutely, as Craig described, the lower yields from that year. Also, um, we had severe uh, heat spike in, in late August that year, and I'm certain that that would have motivated you all to pick some grapes very quickly at the tail end of your, har your maturity window in that year. But it's got, you know, beautiful uh, turkey fat, is, <laughs> turkey grease as we describe we'll call it. called pheasant or something. Yeah, right? some and, other um, pheasant. There you go, very, very, very really, yeah. really rustic. rich aromatics, but this this almost calcium uh, flavor profile, that beautiful length uh, without tannins and phenolics, lingering acidity. And I think my favorite thing about great sparkling wine is the finish that just hangs with you for a long, long time. It's beautiful. I think we did an okay job. Did an okay job. It worked. Without Mike, hey, how is that possible? <laughs> um, we did get a shout out from Joe Augustine, who oh. also worked with us here at Transfer for about 10 years. So Joe, great to hear from you um, out there in Texas. So hopefully everything is going well in, uh, in the Austin area. Um, thanks for, for your hard work over, Joe, over the years yeah. working with us. So cheers. Um, 2011, 2006, 2001. Uh, the last wine that we're going to try then is 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 in fact that that 96 and so the the 96 uh what 24 years old now this would have been a wine that we probably released in 2002 somewhere in there 2003 at this moment in our our history we were probably aging it for uh five six years on the yeast um so i will i will go ahead and and give this a a, a little bit of a uh Four, the 96, the older label. And Craig, perhaps give us a, a sense for how, if there's anything from the 14 years that, that you uh, spent with us here at Transfer that you've taken with you. Maybe a few bottles in the cellar. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, I didn't take a bottle. No, you didn't take them with you, but you still have them. No. But any, any, any pieces oh, of, of your experience I, here that, that, uh, that stick with you? Working with Transfer, I mean, it was... Uh, was what an adventure. There, there was many challenges when I started here. If I remember correctly, I think the number was like 23,000 cases worth of production when I started in 1994. Went through replanting the vineyards, um, going and breaking the uh, Napa Valley Appalachian and going north coast and going out and sourcing fruit from Sonoma County and Anderson Valley, developing a vineyard in Anderson Valley. Um, working with all of these different vineyards in cool climate to build up and get scores. I think it was years ago I'd set a goal for myself. It's like, I want to get every single one of these wines at Schramsberg into the 90-point category on the Wine Spectator. Uh, and lo and behold, uh, I think we got them all over that 90-point um, point, um, barrier. But, you know, replanting the vineyards, developing... Um, new methods to keep up with the production levels here. So coming up with some of the new production equipment here at Schramsberg, uh, I will never forget this experience here. I'll carry this forward for the rest of my life. Well, we were, uh, we actually did a number of things together. You know, thinking about the, uh, uh, here with the, the 96, in the 96, we were still using the, the vacuum system to actually pull the, pull the grapes Can I say out, it? Of, out, of the, out of the bins. Yeah, that that kind of sucked. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, that's <laughs> darn funny. He's, he's as funny as he always was, huh? Uh, 
But that system, for those of you who may not be able to gather, we in 1982, it seems state of the art to actually use a vacuum. Imagine uh, a, a, a tube with a, with a uh, uh, kind of a steel extension coming out of it. And you're standing and you're literally sucking the grapes out of the bins. They go up and over uh, the ceiling and then shoot down through uh, some rollers and splat their way into the press. And we thought that that would be a great way to convey the fruit into the press and then uh, to be able to process it. But the challenge that we used to have was that we had a lot more solids. So we had a lot more phenolic character. Well, it's a phenolic character, maybe a little bitterness and astringency, character from the skins and the seeds. Uh, and in 99, that was the first year that we got to use our, our new system, our new system, um, which, which Craig and Mike designed. So a, a direct system, that, frankly, we still use. Uh, so that technology hasn't changed too much where we take the, 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 the hand-picked fruit, hand-picked always, uh, but directly dropping it into the press and then uh, very, in a much more gentle fashion, uh, processing. And I'll remember, uh, I'll never forget how amazed we were or how pleased we were, maybe better word, uh, racking out that first tank and realizing how, how, how little leaves were actually down at the bottom of the tank. In the old days, sometimes we had to take the hose and go up and over the tank and down into the top because the, 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 the leaves were so high that they went above the racking valve. And the loading of the press was much quicker as well. That's true. Uh, maybe a little less uh, violent, uh, the activity. Uh, violent was a friend <laughs> getting in there and sucking out the fruit. So here we are uh, with the, the 96. Before we jump in, um, I, uh, we've got a, a message here from Mike Bell. Uh, so how can we buy some? Now, uh, the 2006 is out in the club shipment. There's a good way to get that one. Um, if you need the 2001 and the 96, well, Mike, you probably know somebody to talk to. I, I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to figure that one out. There's not as much. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much right now. Uh, and here, David and Judy are saying that they enjoyed the 98, actually, just the other day. So David and Judy, uh, if you do, maybe you have all four of these. Uh, the 96, now two years older. I'll start with Mike. What do you see in this vintage, Mike? And, and I can ask you, what do you recall about the 96 vintage? Because you were actually <laughs> here with Craig and I making the 96. Yeah, well, um, a couple things. First of all, hi, David and Judy. Mike Bell, I talked to you earlier today. Nice to, nice to talk to you. I hope you're well. Um, I, 96 was a long time ago. I think the, uh, the main thing I remember is that was the year Hugh joined us, right? And Hugh came back into the fold and was working in the lab in the cellar uh, straight out of UC Davis. Um, you know, what I remember most clearly about this period of time at the winery was we were in a, a radical transformation of our vineyard sourcing. Uh, when I arrived at the winery in the early 90s, um, all of our grapes were from the Napa Valley. And then my predecessor, Alan Tencher, started us into the conversion of uh, sources to some of the more cool climate places. And then uh, after Alan left, I was given the green light to really go out and find the best grapes from the California coast. And so that took us to Mendocino County, Eastern Sonoma County, Monterey County, and the places where sparkling wine can really thrive and be fabulous. And so Every year was a test of new vineyard sites and new places. And as Craig said, we were developing a vineyard in Mendocino County. So there were a lot of really exciting projects going on at that period of time. And, and 1996 is really the, the introduction of a lot of these really cool climate vineyards into the program, uh, changing the profile of the wines to something that I think is ultimately ageable for long periods of time. No, absolutely. I think there there was a, a conscious effort. You know, a shout out to people like uh, Greg Fowler, uh, uh, Harold Osborne, uh, Dan Goldfield, uh, Todd Graff, other members of the winemaking uh, uh, group there. Uh, Rob McNeil, who uh, who who helped kind of steer this this ship into the, the the era that we are are now in, and and then there have been others that have joined since then. Um, Ninety six uh, was was. Uh, uh, as I said, my, my, my first year back, it was a fairly early year 
uh, uh, not not the the largest crop uh, uh, that we would have. I always felt like '96 lived in the shadow of the '97. The '97 got all all, all, all the glory. You know, '97 seemed to be the vintage of the decade. Uh, but uh, to some degree, for me anyway, the '96 has always had a had a had a special spot. Uh, Craig, what are you seeing here in in the in this '96 as we taste it today? I'm I'm seeing a lot more development uh, in this wine too, so a little bit more aged, but it doesn't have uh, like the acidity that the coastal elements are uh, are showing. It's still aging well, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a story. I'm gonna change of what I see in the wine. '96 for me, uh, I vividly remember driving my car down on Highway 29 to go and supervise a pick. Uh, and I was going to meet Mike in the vineyard as well. And it was in the middle of a torrential rainstorm, lightning and thunder <laughs> and pouring rain. And we've got to cancel the pick. And sure enough, we get to the vineyard and the tractor's out in the vineyard and they're ready to pick and nobody can do anything. So we canceled the pick. And then Mike and I started walking the block. And I vividly remember watching, oh my God, we've got to get this fruit sooner than later because the mold is growing in front of our eyes magically. Anyway, this is... Um, this is a, quite a treat to see something 96. Uh, I do remember we were, we were trying to push the let's get out of the Napa Valley Appalachian, but this one is, I think it's 100% or with, no, not 100%, but definitely within the Napa Valley Appalachian, uh, showing a lot more development, but still holding on strong. It's got a little of the McFarland uh, Monterey uh, Chardonnay in it. Um, but uh, back to the, the, the shores, or what at that time we were calling the Laird Vineyard as they farmed it. Uh, Hyde, another vineyard that we still work Just with right the there creek. across the, the Carnos Creek, uh, playing a, a key role in this blend. To me, it's interesting as I, as I taste it, it has uh, in some ways almost, I don't know if it has more, but some, my initial thought is it almost had a little bit more of the caramelized notes that the 06 had. Than, than the 01, but it's got a little bit of that, that savory essence that we we're picking up in the, the 01 as well. Um, this wine would have been disgorged as we look at it, right? We, uh, 18 years ago, something like that. Uh, so, so often we think of, of, of uh, the, the window for enjoying sparkling wine. Well, if it's a non-vintage, right, you just drink it. And, and I hate to say it, but it seems like 80% of all uh, a sparkling wine, premium sparkling wine is non-vintage. So if we get a vintage uh, dated sparkling wine uh, that, that, that gives us a chance to, to, to really explore it as it ages, to understand how old that, that wine is. And from our standpoint, these are wines that, that can show beautifully for uh, this length of time, 24 years. Um, and as, as, as we enjoyed on Thanksgiving, we had an 87 <laughs> reserve and that was pretty tasty. Matt uh, Levy, who is uh, always, always on top of things, has informed me that we have four a, a, a limited amount of four vertical sets left. So Mike Bell, hey, there's a chance uh, for you to, to, to grab the, the 96 uh, and the 2001 that we don't normally have for sale. But uh, uh, fun to have them uh, with you uh, here today. Uh, Mike, any other uh, closing thoughts as we as we kind of uh, review where we've come from? You know, the, the last wine that we're tasting is the oldest. And then and as we traverse... Uh, the next 15 years to, to where we are now. I can't give you the the, uh, the 16. Uh, we haven't released that one yet. And the uh, 21, well, that's, that's I guess, forming that's... out in the vineyards right about now. Yeah, I mean, look, I, the wines have continued to be spectacular um, over a long period of time. And it's it's fun because I've, I've probably had the chance to taste every um, vintage of Jay Schramm over the years, mm -hmm. at least once or twice. But, but this actually is really fun. Um, Craig and Hugh and I have literally tasted thousands of wines together um, of all different kinds. And it is interesting to, to hear the language. You know, One of the things that you uh, derive from the people that you taste with is a common language and nomenclature for how you describe wines. And there is certainly that here. I mean, I, the words that Craig uses are words that I've been using for years and I introduced <laughs> to new groups. So this is a group that's very familiar uh, tasting wines together and it's nice to catch up with you guys. So cheers. Well, great to be with you, Mike. Uh, and Craig, final thoughts as, as we, uh, it's, 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 I don't wanna say goodbye, but hey, uh, our limit is coming.
You've got a discouraging key. We can go back into the caves. There we go. We, we, we can have more fun with, without <laughs> no, the, uh, the, the I'm, camera. I'm pleased. It, it's the, uh, the invitation to come back was, was uh, gladly accepted. I think my comments to you were quite emphatic, and I will be back. So uh, this is actually quite fun to look at a bunch of wines that we've made. It'd be great if we could do all of the products someday, but I don't know if we have enough time for that. Maybe we <laughs> could do the 24 vintage vertical, right? Um, it's of each line, so Blanc de Blanc, Blanc de Noir. Sure, why not? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can if find. If we get locked down, you never know. Hey, I wanted to thank everybody for joining us today. Thank you so much. Great to uh, hear from friends in, in L.A., uh, Chicago, uh, across the country. Um, I wanted to also mention, I, I almost forgot, that on December 17th, we're going to be joined, that is uh, Monique and I, by Morgan and Irma, and we're going to do a Christmas dinner pairing, something like we did with Holly for Thanksgiving. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got a great set, including the 2016 uh, J. Davies Jamie, right? The new vintage of the Jamie, and also the 2000 Late Disgorge Brut Napa Valley. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Happy holidays.